The UK is a failed state. What used to be the British Empire is now broken Britain. Britain is becoming one of the worst places to live because of soaring taxation. It's the highest it's ever been because of the alarmingly high crime to conviction ratio. 1% of thefts end up with a conviction. 3% of rape ends up with a conviction, which to me is outrageous. Basically, that makes those legal crimes. The NHS, once the envy of the world, the National Health Service, the free healthcare for all, is now a broken system. It swallows up more than 200 billion a year and no one can get in. The cost of living is now outrageous. In fact, the cost of living in the UK is the highest it's been since the Second World War, nearly 100 years. No one believes the politicians anymore. They were partying illegally while we were locked down. If you even open your mouth to talk about this, you get cancelled, deplatformed or demonetized. And that's just the start. So what I'm going to do with you now is share some of the conversations and excerpts with some of my major guests on the disruptors on the death of the economy and the death of the UK. If like me, you think the UK is dying, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn the notification bell on. The UK is f Correct. So just we agree. <laughs> we we'll shake on that. Agree. We agree. So of course I had to start with Andrew Tate. The, it's such a shame because the patriotic Britain me is genuinely appalled at how it was the largest empire on earth. The good old World War II days, stiff upper lip. Britain was such a beautiful country. The countryside to this day is still beautiful if you can avoid the crime ridden cities. It's truly a shame what's happened to that amazing nation. They have failed because they have abandoned their age old traditions. They've abandoned their religion. Christianity has failed to preserve any morality amongst the populace. It's failed to be a fearsome ideology that people do not want to fight against. Interesting, Andrew talks about Christian values. He converted to Islam. And they will always lose. If you have people who can get whatever they want with three inches of sharpened metal, and your enemy against this is two-year court cases, human rights objections, a lawyer, a legal team, a tag, home leave, uh, cultural differences. How could you possibly win? I just mentioned that theft in the UK has about a 1% conviction rate. Maybe this is what Andrew is talking about here. Knife crime, especially in London, is prevalent. The Criminal Prosecution Service do virtually nothing about it. The general populace are afraid to speak. They're afraid to stand up and talk about the true issues. There are people who are exploiting the UK because of its softness, because it is a soft target. I think the reason people are scared to speak up is because they've seen people speak up who've got cancelled, deplatformed, monetized. In fact, hundreds of people say they share my Facebook lives and Facebook stop those lives from being shared. I have a good number of times seen most of my channels shadow ban me, reduce the reach of my content significantly just for trying to create the discussion. Hard times. We know this one and how that all ends. Good times create weak people. Weak people create hard times. Hard times create strong people. Strong people create good times. Good times create weak people. And so the cycle continues. And Andrew believes that we're in the part of the cycle where we've had so many good times that we've created weak people and we are on the edge of the falling of the British Empire and maybe the West. Nigel Farage is very, very scared of the East and the power they have. Your money doesn't go very far. You can't get in to the NHS. Have you ever seen this country in such a state? I do remember 1974-5. Mm. I'm a bit older than you. Yeah. And I do remember inflation getting to 27%. Sometimes people say to me, but yeah, but Rob, inflation's only 6.74%. That's because they're believing the propaganda of the media. Let me ask you this, has your bread, your travel, your accommodation, your rent, your electric, your heating, your gas, your water, have they only gone up 6.7%? So Nigel Farage can only remember one time in the last 50 years where the cost of living and inflation and taxation was worse. I mean, it was bad. Yeah. It was bad. And, you know, this country, which only half a century before had had the biggest empire the world had ever seen, was, mm. was really, really on its uppers. And it seems now like we are as close as we've ever been again 
to a centrally run socialist, even communist state. I know some people who work in the city who are paying 60% in tax. That doesn't include what you spend. So with what you spend and what you earn, you're at 70% tax or more. Is that not communism? You're working 70% of your time, seven hours out of 10 for the government. The National Health Service doesn't work. It just doesn't work. You had 1.5 million people have waited over a month to see a GP. I mean, you could be dead by then. That is mad. In fact, someone who works for me, um, she died of cancer very quickly. It's more than likely because for many months she couldn't get seen. It has been suggested that the deaths due to lockdown are higher than the deaths saved by lockdown. Now, of course, if you say that openly, you can get cancelled, shut down, even if the data backs you up on that. Why should you not be able to challenge that? Now, part of this, part of this is because we have an exploding population and no one wants to talk about it. Why would we as a nation pay someone more money not to work when we are in our worst economic times possibly for 50 years, possibly since World War II? Imagine if we got just 2 million of the 5.3 million on benefits back to work. Those 2 million are going to have better self-worth. They're going to generate tens or hundreds of millions back into the economy and they're going to save tens and hundreds of millions in expenses from the government. Is that not just common sense? Country overtaken by outsiders, diminishing of the traditional cu country culture and ideals of a country. OK, so we just got the 2021 census out, blah, 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 blah. Less than half the country are Christian, most identify as atheist. The Muslim majority is getting increasingly strong. Katie Hopkins recently said that we will no longer ever again see a British mayor of London. Except that diversity always means not white. And no one will recognise that at the point that whites are not a majority, sorry, they're a minority, they should also have some rights. What fascinates me here is why is it so socially unacceptable to talk about white people as the minority, if they're the minority. I've never shared this with anyone before publicly, but I've been turned down from three major media opportunities and I was probably the best person for the job. I was told I was the best person for the job. But because I'm a 40 year old white male, I am not the demographic that TV is looking for. And what breaks my heart is to travel and speak to ordinary Brits who, who will tell you, I just feel like second class citizen. I don't belong here. It, small business owners who weren't supported in any way driving the economy through. So we even have to bleep out the word. And as a business owner, with at the time virtually 150 employees, there was virtually no support from the government. All right, there's the odd emergency loan, but that doesn't even scratch the surface of the lost revenue, the lost willingness for our staff to work, and the dramatic increase in costs and taxes off the back of locking us down. Most people I talk to in business want to leave this country, certainly because of the tax. There is not a business owner that I can think of that if it was easy to pull their kids out of school and take their family with them, they wouldn't leave the UK. In the UK, you know, we've got a president, uh, we've got a prime minister at the moment who, who hasn't been voted in. But we're just quite happily sit back and go, oh yeah, that's, that's absolutely fine. You know, we'll let, you know, let that person make all the decisions. And it's, when, when has that been okay? When is, mm. when is, you know, it's like, wow. Talk about politics being outdated. You know, trying to, you know, trying to keep up with modern day society. Of course it's outdated, but they've got certain ways that keep you in the system. Politics needs a dramatic reform. There must be ways where people who are suitable for leadership, who are popular, are allowed to run for prime minister. And we've seen disruptive presidents in the US like Donald Trump. We've seen disruptive governors like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And it's virtually impossible for people like those to become leaders of the UK. And I believe this is what we really need. For example, for someone to run the economy, they need to have run a real economy. A real economy is a business. The country is not a real economy because in a real economy, you have to balance the books, the profit and loss, 
the balance sheet, the assets and the liabilities. You cannot trade legally insolvently, i.e. have more liabilities than assets. You can be struck off as a director. You could even go to prison for that. But the government can year on year on year on year build bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger debt and then just pass that on to the new person. This must change. I pay for my I've got private health care. I've got private health care, so I pay for that. Pay, pay for you also pay kids. for the NHS, by the way, yeah, through your tax. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Dental care, same. Um, education. You know, it's like there's no benefits where they go, right, do you know what, you're paying that and you're paying this amount. It's one, one system fits all. The reason for this is if you look at where your tax money goes, the highest amount that you pay is for other or unspecified. Then the next highest thing you pay for is the NHS, which is broken. And then the next highest thing you pay for is interest on debt. You didn't request to borrow this money. You don't get any benefit for borrowing this money, yet you're paying off the interest on the debt. It's the third highest cost of your tax revenue, except it's just interest. It's not even paying off the debt, it's just the interest on the debt. You're benefiting the country by giving us all this. We should, we should now benefit you by, by giving you these little, these little breaks along the way or these yeah. little benefits along the way. I used to get an NHS that worked, I don't anymore. I used to get a lower tax rate, now I get a higher one. I thought I owned all my property, but actually, I think technically, the state owns all my property. There are no grants, no subsidies. They've taken away at least five major fair tax breaks for taking all the risk and employing all the people that I do. There's not much left. But it's, it's, I'm, not, I'm not trying to beat the system. I'm not angry at the system. I'm just like, right. You're not. Oh, listen, no, I am. The thing about it, I'm not angry at this because I'm in it. You know, if, 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 I'm, if I'm that angry with it, get the hell out of it. I'm angry because they've taken away so many things and they haven't offered anything up in return. I'm angry because I feel trapped because there's nothing that I seem to be able to do or say that will get anyone in politics to listen. I wrote one of the best selling books in this country on money. I've been an entrepreneur for 20 years. I've got some experience. Why are they not asking for people like me to consult? Why are they not working with us so I can hire more people, help them with the masses that they're, they're paying in welfare? teach them how to incentivize and encourage entrepreneurship. This saddens me to say this, but if I was single and I had no dependents in this country, I'd be gone. So next we have Lawrence Fox, and when I interviewed him, he'd been canceled in his movie career. Since then, he's now been canceled in his media career. So, you know, Sadiq Khan is going, I'll give you all, all the kids can have a free dinner, but he's charging everybody else a ton of money uh, taxation in the name of salvation for stuff like you, Les. So everyone's like, oh, brilliant, Sadiq, you're so thoughtful and caring for the kids. But what he doesn't do is go to the millions of families that he's just made it impossible when they've got no money anyway to travel around. Yeah. Look how many coppers there are in my house. Look at them coming to steal everything, take everything out of my house. It does seem crazy that there's five police officers called out to someone who's not against the vandalism of the cameras that are watching and fining us, yet there are thefts and rapes, and not just the odd one, but 97 to 99% of them that aren't leading to criminal charges. It seems a ridiculous misuse of resources and power, and certainly seems more of a PR and media campaign for one mayor of London to silence one nuisance right-wing commentator. I was being interviewed today on a podcast and someone was talking about, oh, well, rich people, you know, they don't pay the money down the system to the poor. And I said, they do. They do in the form of taxes and the taxes go to the government and then the money doesn't go down to the poor. Um, I mean, you're probably in a similar position. I mean, I probably pay out of every pound I earn, probably in some form of tax, 65 pence of the pound. Something like that. I mean, I, I worked out with what I earn and then what I spend, it's 70 pence in there the pound. There you go. I mean, that's outrageous. If taxes were a flat 20%, I would pay them gratefully. I wouldn't need smart accountants. I wouldn't be in any way looking for any uh, way to legally avoid taxes. I would just pay it and then Lots more money from my companies would come out into the economy as opposed to me not drawing the money because what's the point in me drawing a load of money if I'm going to be giving 70% of it away? 
What's the point? Now, a lot of people say, but 20% tax isn't enough. But it is. Because the professional beggars on the street who are gaming the benefit system, who have a house and are getting benefits and are earning 150 to 200 a day, they should pay 20% tax. And there might be a couple of million or more of those. The billionaires and the billion dollar companies, they're paying 4% corp tax when they should be paying 25 in this country. So if they went from 4 to 20 at the top, and at the bottom they went from 0 to 20, and in the middle we all went from 35, 45 and 60 to 20. Do the maths on that, but I reckon there'd be possibly trillions trillions to be released back into the economy. So I did want to offer some solutions in this and not just moan, 20%, 22% flat rate tax. Now here's why they won't do it. Number one, it's too simple. They can't hire thousands of people to manage the tax codes that's thousands of pages long. When something is complicated, they can baffle you. There's political control from these big companies and corporations, maybe with big donations, or they want to influence policy so they can have their company in Ireland, so they cannot pay their tax in the UK, even though they generate billions of tax in the UK. In America, Hillary Clinton accused Donald Trump of avoiding paying tax basically paying no tax. And Donald Trump replied, yes, he does that because of the policy that Hillary created. She complains that Donald Trump took advantage of the tax code. Well, why didn't she change it? Why didn't you change it when you were a senator? The reason you didn't is that all your friends take the same advantage that I do. You've got to admit, Donald has a point there. In fact, no, don't just take it from me on a better tax system. Take it from this tax and economics expert. How should the current tax system change? We should go to uh, taxing people 10 or 15% flat rate income tax uh, and we should replace as many taxes as possible, just get rid of them altogether. I'm seeing quite a lot of prominent people convert to Islam. It's sad, it's really sad. It's because Christianity has become so lukewarm. Uh, the Christian faith leaders have become, well, just worldly leaders, just going along with the current trends of the time and right. not sticking firm to the faith. And people look around and they want something different to what's going on in the world around them because it's decrepit. Right. And actually they look at Islam and say, well, there's strength there because these people are sticking to their principles and that's why they're being attracted towards Islam. The Christian faith is very simple. You know, I've, I've described it here several times, but people are overcomplicating it or trying to dumb it down for, for a modern audience. It doesn't need to be dumbed down, it doesn't need to be overcomplicated, it is what it is. And we've been given an instruction guide to follow, and people don't even want to follow that anymore. They're, oh well, that was for a time, that was you know in a historic context, we've got to look at where we are today, we've made progress since then, and this whole assumption comes from the premise that we are better than our forebears, but also that we are better or no better than God. And that's obviously not true. I think people converting to Islam over Christianity and what Calvin calls Christianity becoming lukewarm, I think that's a sign of a decline of the UK and of the West. I think it's a sign of a rise in extreme left or woke culture, whereby we must be able to identify with a thousand different genders or sexes. I think to uphold a value system like the Ten Commandments, you need a rule of law that encourages those values and commandments and punishes those who break them. Neither are happening now. You're not getting encouraged or rewarded for upholding your values and you're not getting penalised for breaking them. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. Well, actually, thou shalt steal and 99% you'll get away with it. Thou can rape and pillage and you have a 97% success rate. I mean, it's crazy. I have interviewed many people on Disruptors who were cancelled, and I interviewed them, or have subsequently been cancelled. Why do you think you lost your job at Sky? I don't think I've made myself particularly popular on not wearing your Black Lives Matter badge. Was it true you were axed from SAS Who Dares Win? Yes, I was axed. I was told it was for diversity. They perceive you to be someone who... She's vile, she's a racist, yeah. she's a whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Now, I used to think there isn't free speech because if you don't say what the mainstream media or whoever controls them like, you will be cancelled. But the more I interview these people, the more I realise there's just consequences of speech. And some people can say what they want and they're fine. And other people can say something relatively innocuous and they are cancelled by everyone. 
everywhere. So the question of free speech will rumble on. And one of the things I won't do on my channel is hold back any commentator or guest just because they've been cancelled. From here, the UK and maybe the rest of the world needs to encourage discourse and debate from both sides, political, economical, and allow discussion, debate, and even argument without ridiculing and entering wars and killing the other side. We need to get rid of progressive taxes and go to a flat rate. Just getting rid of progressive tax will get rid of thousands of complicated pages of tax code. Probably hundreds of politicians will be out of a job. Maybe that's why it's not gone on a flat rate. The people at the very bottom on welfare and benefits gaming the system, they need to be taxed. The people at the very top avoiding tax and only paying 4%, they need to be taxed. And everyone else in the middle needs less tax that will still generate net potentially trillions more than is already being generated. The NHS, the National Health Service, once the envy of the world, as Boris Johnson said, needs to be completely wiped out, completely reformed. Whether it's an insurance model or a private model, it needs to be overhauled. We need more privatization. We need more private companies generating jobs, firing up the economy. We need to attract foreign money. We need incentives and tax breaks for anyone who wants to start a business and anyone who wants to employ people. We need grants and subsidies for innovation and technology. We need to uphold national values. Our legal system needs to represent these national values and anyone who commits a serious crime needs serious consequences. We need to stop funding all these wars we're not involved in. We need the media to not be a fear-mongering propaganda machine. We need to encourage a free market back to real capitalism where startup challenger companies and banks can disrupt and compete with the bigger entities which have become slow and lazy and monopolistic. We need to stop ostracizing landlords. We need to work together to make housing more accessible to the masses. And the entire political system needs completely shaking up where we go back to what used to be a democracy. And one final thing, we need people who have actually run real economies with decades of experience involved in politics and giving advice to politicians who only know theory. I have had dozens of conversations of people in England, the West and America on these subjects and you can find one of the interviews right here. If there's anything in this video you've agreed with or like me, you'd like to get this message out to more people, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn the notification bell on.